everybody, Gamer Penny here, bringing you another episode of our Lord of the Rings Online Let's Play, and we are back with Baird Beam. And today we're going to continue on the main story quest, and that means we are going to go in the Mead Hall and talk to Ingbert. All right, Ingbert. I thank you for your discretion. I thank you for your discretion, Baird Beam. Many a maid has cast herself into the torrent of the Entwash when learning of her unrequited love. I am not yet ready for Ingus to learn of her betrothed death. Ingbert sizes you up appraisingly. I was blinded earlier. You are not the stripling for which I mistook you. My displeasure with Horn does not extend to you. You are welcome to come and go within the Entwash Vale if you are a friend to her people. The Uruks you, see, Uruks you seek passed north of Eowerth not long ago, and shortly afterward, Eomer, the third marshal of the Riddermark, rode after them. I am expecting him back any day now. Talk to Cordon Eowerth. Okay. I cannot find Nona. It is as if she just vanished. You tell Cordon that Ingbert believes the Uryx you seek have likely been slain. We will not know for certain until we find them ourselves, Baird Beam, but we cannot leave yet. I looked all around Eoworth, but I cannot find Nona. It is as if she just vanished. Horn has gone looking for her, but when he last came this way, he had found nothing yet. Did she tell you anything that might give us an idea of where she has gone, or do you think she has fallen into trouble of some kind? The men of Rohan do not look kindly upon her people. You should ask the people of Eoworth if they have seen her, and I will do the same. I do not know if they will tell me anything, but we cannot let her disappearance go without investigation, Baird Beam. Horn is distraught, as you might expect him to be. He had grown fond of our fiery companion. You do not need elf eyes to have seen it. Uh-oh, I hope she's alright. Nice to see another player around here. Um. It worth jail. Okay, I'm just gonna go down this. Or not. <laughs> I thought I thought this thing would be down here. Find Horn Onona somewhere in or around Aeoworth. Okay. Uh oh. I have a feeling this is not the way. Let me get back. Whoops, come on. Go back up and around. is dire. Why do these all look burnt out? Maybe they're supposed to be. Okay, is Horn or Nona around here? Here's Horn. I've not seen oh, the Dunlin, but Horn has gone out to the cliffs. He seemed upset about something. She is gone. She is really gone. Horn holds Nona's sword in his hands and seems to see nothing but the lonely weapon. I found it here on the stones, Baird Beam, but why would she leave it? You peer out over the edge to the rushing river that the, 
that has cruelly claimed so many maidens before their times, and Horn follows your gaze with his eyes. No, Bearbeam, she did not jump into the Entwash. I do not believe it. She left us for some reason, and she left this sword here so I would find it. But why leave us? Why leave me? He clenches one fist. I will take her brother's sword, and I will keep it for her until she returns. She will return, Bearbeam. I will not wield Wadu's blade, but I will hold on to it for Nona. Tell Cordon that Nona has left us, but that she will return. Her past simply does not follow ours for the moment. Really? Why'd she... Ha, huh. huh, I say. All right, where is Cordon again? Is he up here? There he is. I think Nona will return in time, but I do not know when. You tell Cordon what transpired on the cliffs, and he smiles grimly. That is what I thought, Baird Beam. Nona is indeed fine and will return to us when she has resolved a few things in her mind. I know now why she has left, and why she did not bring her brother's sword with her. For love. You have seen the way the people of Rohan look at her, with fear and with distrust. She is not one of them. Despite Horn's banishment to Stangard, he is still much more of Rohan than she will ever be. So too has she seen the damage love can do. What would learning of Prince Theodred's death do to Ingrith, his betrothed? Nona grew, Nona grew too fond of Horn over too quick a time to lose him into battle and death. Perhaps she left to shield herself from growing even more attached to him. Perhaps she simply needs time to resolve her feelings. I think she will return Baird Beam, but I do not know when. We must be kind to Horn in the meantime. He will feel this loss sharply, I think. Dang. Those are some good pants. Horn will need to master his grief if we are to continue. We cannot allow this distraction to steer us away from our true purpose. Nona will return. I am certain of it. Aylmer has returned from his ride north. Aylmer has returned from his ride north. As Reeve Engbert promised, Aomer has returned from his ride north. He is outside the Mead Hall, Baird Beam. Introduce yourself to see what he knows of the Uryx we pursue. Aha. Hello, Aomer. I am pleased to make your acquaintance, my friend. Yours is the second party I have encountered who sought the Uryx, Baird Beam, and to you I say what I said before. The Uryx have all been destroyed, and I saw no sign of any other living thing at the site. The news brought great sadness to the three we encountered. The man was Aragorn, son of Arathorn, and his companions were a dwarf, Gimli, Glowing Sun, and an elf called Legolas. Speak to my man Aothang if you would hear more of these travelers or their prey. If Aomer, my commander, wishes me to answer your questions, I will do so. Ask what you will and hear my questions. Whether they give you joy or sadness is no concern of mine. Okay. The three hunters lived when I left them. No Uryx escaped the circle of my riders, but it is possible your friends may have escaped before we closed in. It is a small chance, but it is what Aragorn hoped for, and perhaps his hope was more than hope, and there was truth in it. Aomer makes a wry face. Perhaps, but Aomer and Aomen's son put stock in cold steel and sunlight on the plains. Without some unlikely Dwimmer craft, I fear the halfling friends Aragorn sought met a sad end. The three hunters, however, lived when I left them. My men caught up with the Uruks just outside the eaves of Fangorn. To the northwest. Their leader, a fierce Uruk whose name seemed to be Ugluk, if the panicked words of the fellows can be trusted, fought me blade to blade after I dismounted. I proved the better swordsman to the pride of Aomund and the shame of whatever disgusting lout claimed to sire Ugluk. Ride to this site and look for signs of your missing friends or Aragorn and his two companions. If my men and I are still here when you return, you are welcome to ride south with us to Edoras. Find Aomer's vengeance northwest of Aeoworth. All right, I will go and look northwest. Oh, 
How does one get out? Aomer's Vengeance. What level is this? 81 and we're 79. We're falling behind a little bit by not doing the side quests. Which is not nice. Not nice at all. All the way up there. Dang. Discovered the wood fen. It's thundering and lightning on the plains of Rohan. Looks really cool in the distance. Alright, we'll go off this way. Well, let me go get the horse on whatever is on the path. There's the look lookout tower. Welcome, my friend. All right, we'll find Aylmer's vengeance. Are we going to be close to Fangorn? Is that Fangorn right there? Aha. Uh -huh. The reek of the burning rise- that's Fangorn right there. The reek of the burning rises- what'd it say? Still from the site where Aramur destroyed the Uryx. The Uryx. You stare at the defeated Ugluk and wonder if Boromir rests comfortably from whatever, wherever it is he watches now that the leader of the band that set upon him is no more. Damon confused footprints at Aramur's vengeance. You pry your eyes away from Ugluk and resolved to search for signs of the halfling. Find a great deal of footprints in the chaos that seemed to go nowhere. Some of which lead northwest. What does Horn think? Will you he dare the forest of Fangorn? You say some of the tracks led toward Fangorn. They are likely not those of the halflings, for Aramur was certain no one left the site of the battle without his knowledge. They may be they may then be the tracks of Aragorn, Legolas, or Gimli. What brought them toward Fangorn? What does Horn think? Will he dare the forest of Fangorn? I will go, and gladly, but he has expressed worry about such places before. I see how Corridon looks at me. He thinks I fear to go into Fangorn. Horn looks at you with his piercing gray eyes. I went into another ill-omened wood with you not long ago, Beardbeam, do you remember? There I took a grievous wound, an injury from which I will never recover, nor would I wish to heal that hurt. I will follow you into Fangorn. What can be done to me that I should fear? 
Dragonborn. If we cannot help our friends directly, let us help them indirectly. My father told me his men had heard orc axes beneath the eaves of Fangorn. There must be a camp of the creatures somewhere to the north of here among the trees. That is the way the tracks go, are they not? We should go to this camp of orcs and slay them. While we do, let us keep our eyes open for your friends. If we cannot help them directly, perhaps this will help them in the indirect fashion. Okay. Pants on. Alright, into Fangorn. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Like, Fangorn was always a little bit scary towards me, or for me. Oh god. Look at the map. Can we go around the side? Beat orcs, it says. Okay. This must be an orc. Or not. Not. Give me. Gotta be in here. Okay. Now the question is, are we rubber banding or is Fangord moving around us? <laughs> oh god. 82. Oh. We're rubber banding because now I'm stuck. I can't move at all. we go. Alright. Okay. Cutting down Fangorn. This is a really scary place. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Okay, and one more. There we go. You hear a voice coming from a misty hollow south of the orc camp. This real quick. This way?
The great creature stares down at you with baleful eyes, then it speaks again. What are these small creatures that come among the trees? So many, so many, whom, but Gandalf saw to the elf, the man, and the dwarf. Treebeard has his guests, and others come among the trees. Baldbark was told not to let others disturb the meetings. Hroom, boom, broom. You should leave. It is not a time for you. Hroom. Okay. Get the heck out of here. So Gandalf. Is that our first time finding out that Gandalf is still alive? Or resurrected, I guess. A bat. Looks really pretty here, though. You guys didn't follow me in there. You said you'd come with me. <laughs> I did not dare to hope the tree herder still walked in Middle Earth. It is a day for wonders, Bearbeam. Mithrandir lives, as you said, and he has returned to where he is most needed. A kingdom beset on all sides by danger. If Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli are not safe with Mith Mithrandir, they will not be safe anywhere. Corden's face lights up with a brilliant smile. And the second wonder, I did not dare to hope that tree herders still walked in Middle-earth. But today I have met an ent, heard his speech, and was told in no uncertain terms that I was not welcome. Cordon is more pleased than you can ever remember him seeing. Seeing him. Aw. What a delight. Asked to leave this forest by an ent. Did he say his name was Baldbark? Then I will call him Ridhrif in the language of my people, and I will keep this encounter near to my heart. Cordon. Let us return to Eoworth and see if Eomer remains there with his men. Rudriff's words were reassuring, were they not? He told us in his way that Merry and Pippin were safely in the company of Treebeard, who can only be an Ent. And the man, dwarf, and elf of which he spoke must be Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas. If they are now in the presence of Mithrandir, surely we need worry about them no longer. Let us return to Eoworth and see if Eomer remains there with his men. Horn wished to be off immediately. We should speak t with him when we are back in Eoworth. Okay. Talk to Horn in Eoworth. We'll go up to here and do a fast travel back. Did I get those gloves? All right. Welcome and well met, my friend. Hello, can we swift travel? Horn. Not up here. I'd be down further. There he is. I see him just around the corner. Aeomer and his men are still here. I spoke with him briefly. 
and he said we were welcome to make the southward journey with him. He has a few places he would like to stop on the way, including, well, including the stone of what? Wearing Wergendi. <laughs> Horn sighs heavily. Do you remember, Baird Beam? It was a story I told you of the campfire on our journey by boat down the Anduin, with Cordon and with Nona. King Fengal and his line were cursed. No heir of Fengal's line could, would survive to sit long upon the throne of Rohan. Many thought that the curse had been broken by Prince Theodred, and it seems it was not so. Aemir wishes to visit the stone, and you must understand why. With the prince dead, as uh, he, as Theoden's nephew, is now next in line for the throne. He is of the King Fengal's line, and the curse must now be ever in his thoughts. Speak to him, but gently. Who... Who can know what it must be like to live under such a curse? Okay. What a strange tale you weave. Did you learn anything about your friends from the sites, site where we destroyed the Uruks? Amor listens to your account and marvels particularly at your description of bald bark. What a strange tale you weave, Baird Beam. To think such peculiar things persist under the light of the sun in these days. Tell me, when you are ready to depart, and my men will be ready. There are a few sites I would have us visit on our way south to Snowborn, and from there we will go to Edoras. I'm ready. You are welcome to ride with my men and I on our southward road. I have business in Snowborn. But first, I would see Wirgendar's stone. Wirgendar. Will I fall to the crone's curse? <laughs> there it lies, Beardbeam, the stone of Wirgendar. Do you do you know the tale? Amor seems surprised to hear that you have been told the tale of Wirgendar, the crone, and King Fengal, but then realization dawns. Ah, uh, of course you would know it. How could you travel with a bard such as Horn and not know it? It is a popular tale, though it must be grim and unpleasant. I expect it is true in all lands. The people enjoy stories that seem to explain their poor lot or continued hardships. The Mark's finest lore masters poured over the words of Wurgenda's curse. They read it thus, that no son born of Fengal or his heirs would survive to sit long upon the throne. They thought the curse would end if something happened to restore the lost glory of Rohan. It was thought for many years that Urgender's curse had already expired. My uncle's father, Thango, lived in Gondor, and the lords of Rohan called a, a Witten and begged him to return to the Mark and take the throne. They said he was virtuous enough and would be such a good king that his reign was certain to end the curse. Indeed, Thango lived long, and his son Theoden now has many years behind him. It seems now with the death of Prince Theodred that the curse merely slumbered. Perhaps it did not affect Thengel or my uncle because they were already born, or because they were not in the Rittermark when it was set. None but Wergenda can know, and she is long dead. The curse that did not affect Thengel did affect his daughters, and few of their sons survived to reach adulthood. <clears throat> I am the line I am of the line of King Fengel, Baradbeam. Will the curse of Wergenda now affect me? Am I fated to die and Rohan to suffer? Will all I seek to accomplish come to naught? The deeds of the past often have grave effects on the present, Baird Beam. Curses have power, and with the force of belief behind them, they can become even more powerful. How else can the misfortune of Fengal's line be explained, and how will knowledge of the curse affect Aomer's actions now? The people of Rohan need him to be strong. He cannot cower in fear of Wurgander's memory, or his people will suffer. I had been so certain the curse had, was broken and had been all of Rohan, or as had been all of Rohan. What must it be like to labor neath the shadow of such a thing and never know when it will reveal its fangs? If Aemer, out of fear, refuses to fight the evils that face our land, then King Fengal's greed will have struck the death blow for Rohan. We're under attack! Mount up and slay them all! Hey! Wow! 
Bird. Where's the rest of them? Here's one. Ah, yes. <laughs> Where'd you go? Get back here. Ah, oh, you shit. All right, we've got three of them down. Hold on, I need to do a little I am just lagging out the wazoo today. Ah, it came up behind me. Potion. There we go. All right, one more. There we go. Six of six. Talk to Aomer. The orcs have unwittingly helped me, Baird Beam. During the battle, I had no thought at all for Wiganda or her curse. I have made up my mind. I will not allow the curse of Wiganda to control, to control my actions. I am my own man, Aemon's son, and I do not fear the memory of ill deeds done or vengeance sought. I will fight for the people of Rohan until I no longer can do so, and even then I will keep fighting. I have given Wurgenda the time I thought she was due, and now I put the stone behind me, and will think of it no more. Onward to Snowborn. We are needed. Okay. Hey. Thank you for your help, friend. I'm glad to have you and your companions as allies when danger strikes. Orcs and wargs are the type of danger I am not afraid to face. Threats of a more otherworldly nature, those I cannot abide. Still, Aemon's son will face such dangers with a, as bold a heart as he can manage. The bolder still with allies such as you at his side. I'm ready to continue our ride south to Snow. I'm ready to continue our ride south to Snowborn if you are. I ordered Reeve Fastred to empty his lands, sending his people across the Entwash, where they can be better defended. But he is young, and I fear foolish. I ride to see if he has obeyed my command. We will speak again in Snowborn. 
Okay. Well, um, I think we are now far enough behind that we may need to do some side quests. Because that's level 83 and we're 79. We're four levels too small and we got pretty low on, on that one. So what I think I'm going to do um, is we'll probably head back and do the bingo quest. Hello, half-orc invader. You're very close to Aomer, and I don't like it. Um, we'll go back and do the bingo quest, and then we'll do some side quests as well, and try to get at least up to level 81 um, before continuing on. But we're going to do that in the next episode. So, guys, I want to thank you so much for all of your support on this series. If you do want to see more of the Lord of the Rings online Let's Play, make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Otherwise... I will see you guys next time. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.